All right, what's up everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Gunfish TV. Thank you for tuning in to today's episode. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna talk a little bit about gear ratios on bait casting reels. So before I get into that, if you haven't hit the subscribe button, go ahead and do that. Check out some of my other videos. I think you really like them. So let's go ahead and get into the video. All right, so the importance of gear ratios when dealing with bait casting reels is the gear ratio affects how much line per handle turn uh, your reel brings in. So in other words, the lower the gear ratio of your reel, the less line you're going to bring in per handle turn. And the higher the gear ratio, the more line you're going to bring in per handle turn. All right, so there's a wide variety of gear ratios available in baitcast reels these days. You have really low gear ratios. You have them as low as four, six to one. There may be something even slower than that, but four, six to one is considered extremely low. And you have them all the way up to now some reels have 10 one to one, which is extremely fast. We're pushing, you know, 40 plus inches of, uh, you know, retrieving 40 plus inch of line in per handle turn, which is absolutely nuts. I mean, that's an extremely fast gear ratio. And some people, you know, use reels that are that fast. They want to bring in that much line. Uh, personally, I do not. That's my personal preference. I feel like there's three main gear ratios when dealing with mainly bass fishing with a bait cast, with bait cast and reel. I feel like there's three main gear ratios and those are the three that I stick to. So I'm gonna start off with the first gear ratio that I use uh, for bass fishing and that is a five two to one reel. All right, this is a Abu Garcia winch. This is a, like a Gen 2. I have three winches and I use them on three different rods but and for three different techniques, but they're all ones that I feel like I need a slow retrieve for. All right, so this is my spinnerbait rod and reel. And like I said, this is a, re, a Revo winch and this has a five, two to one gear ratio. This reel brings in, I think, 21 inches per handle crank. Most five two to one reels bring in anywhere from 21 to 23 inches per handle turn. And this one brings in, I believe it's 21. So it's a very slow gear ratio reel. It doesn't retrieve much line in per full handle crank, which is something that I want when fishing with my Colorado blade spinner baits, willow leaf spinner baits. It doesn't matter. I prefer to use a slower reel when I'm throwing a spinner bait. I can take this reel and speed it up if I, if, if I need to, to burn that spinner bait right up under the surface, you know, or I can throw this out, let a big Colorado blade spinner bait sink all the way to the bottom in the winter months or early spring and slow roll it on the bottom. You can also do that in the summertime as well. So I use five, two to one on my spinner bait rod and reel. All right, I also use five, two to one on my crankbait rod and reel. I have two crankbait rod and reels, but I use five, two to one for my big deep divers and then also for my lipless crankbaits. I primarily fish lipless crankbaits in early spring, late winter, early spring. So I fish them slowly. And then for throwing a big crankbait with a big lip, you wanna have that cranking power. A lower ratio reel has more cranking power in the reel. It has bigger gears. It, it, you crank a lot easier. It doesn't wear you down as much. Plus you're not cranking that crankbait as fast and you're able to keep it in a strike zone a lot longer. That fish can track it down and attack it. I also use five two to one gear ratio reel for my Alabama rig. That uh, Alabama rig, that's something that you don't fish very fast. You throw it out, you let it sink down and you just sit there and you just crank it nice and slow. I prime, you can use that all through the year, but I primarily throw it late spring or late winter, early spring. And I want to let that thing sink down pretty deep and I want to sit there and crank it slow. And those fish will come and load up on it. That's not something that you really want to burn. Uh, there may always be some special instance where they would want it like that, but primarily that's not what you fish it for, uh, how you fish it. But also uh, uh, Alabama rig is a heavy rig. We're talking about something that weighs four or five ounces and has a lot of water resistance. So you want that cranking power to sit there and be able to crank that and not wear you down when you're throwing it a lot. So five, two to one, but around 21 to 23 inches of 
line brought in per handle turn and it has a lot of cranking power you're able to slow down i'm a fast-paced fisherman so it's hard for me to slow down but throwing a slower gear ratio reel allows me to do that so five two to one that's what i use it for all right so the next one we're going to talk about is a six four to one gear ratio reel all right so i consider six four to one to be a mid-range reel that is probably the most versatile gear ratio out of any reel that you can that you can fish with so if you're going to own one reel for bass fishing i would say use a six four to one the reason being you can throw a spinner bait on it you can slow down you can throw a chatter bait which is what i use this this particular rod and reel for if you you can even throw a buzz bait with a six four to one how many years went by when people were throwing buzz baits on six four to one myself included I own more 6.4 to 1 reels than any other reels that I own. It's, like I said, it's a mid-range reel. It's perfect for a lot of different techniques. Now, most 6.4 to 1 gear ratio reels retrieve somewhere between 25 to 28 inches of line per handle crank. All right, so this one, this is a Revo X, 6.4 to 1, Revo X, and this right here on handle, 27 inches per handle crank with this particular reel. Like I said, this is my chatterbait uh, rod and reel. I throw a chatterbait. Now you're probably thinking, why do you throw a spinnerbait on a 5.2 to 1 and you throw a chatterbait on 6.4 to 1? Well, here's the reason. A chatterbait has a lot of resistance to it. And for some reason, I find it much easier for me to slow down when I have all that resistance pulling back with a, with a a, a six four to one reel, I can just crank it slower. It has a lot of resistance. I don't know why, it's just my personal preference. So six four to one, 25 to 28 inch, somewhere in there, and all that does, um, it, it, it does, how much line you have on your reel does determine your gear ratio a little bit. If you have a lot of line or less line, that does affect your retrieve some. But just overall, this one reel is 27 inches per handle crank. And I use this for my chatterbait, I use it for my frog, believe it or not, and that mainly has to do with my cadence that I fish my frog. I've attempted to use higher speed reels with my frog, but I go back to six, four to one every single time. All right, so I use it with my on my jerkbait uh, reel. I use it, um, this is the rod reel I use for a jigging spoon, which that's not that, you know, not that crucial, but I throw a uh, swim jig, six four to one you know all these different techniques i use six four to one my square bill crankbait i use a six four to one i retrieve that a little bit faster than say a deep diving crankbait you know so six four to one is the most versatile reel in your whole reel lineup that you can have so if you're only going to have one i would definitely say go with a six four to one gear ratio reel all right so now we're going to step it up a little bit and we're gonna move into a little bit higher speed reel. Now, the high speed reels that I own, and I may be in a minority, but the high speed reel that I own is a seven one to one. This is a Abu Garcia Revo X, which is, I feel like the best reel you can buy for the money. I'm an Abu Garcia guy. But this is a this is a seven three to one. Okay, my fault. Seven three to one gear ratio reel. This is considered a high speed reel, in my eyes, 30 inches per handle crank. All right, so this brings in 30, 30 inches per handle crank. So years ago, you know, 6 4 to 1 was considered a high speed reel, and now these days they have extremely high speed reels, but this is a 7 3 to 1. They make some 7 1 to 1s, this is a 7 3 to 1, and then you step on up to 8 1 to 1, 9 1 to 1, and you just get to a, a massive amount of uh, bringing in a massive amount of line per handle crank. So this one brings in 30 inches. All the reels that I have that are 7.3 to 1 or high speed reel, I use for flipping and pitching and casting a big jig or big worm. The reason that I use a high speed reel for those techniques is when I'm doing a lot of flipping or pitching and you're flipping around, you want to be able to bring that line in quick and flip right back out there. So you're able to get in more pitches per day, so you're gonna put it in front of more fish. The other reason that I use a high-speed reel is 
when you're pitching up there in heavy cover or reeds or pads or whatever, and you flip up there and you come up and you got slack line, that bass has done picked it up and that fish is coming out, you have to get in that line quick. You have to get that slack out of your line so you can reel down and hit him and get a good, get a good hook set on him. So you need to be able to get in as much line as possible with that hand crank. Now, some people, like I said, use eight one to one, nine one to one. Personally, I don't use that, but if they want to use it, that's fine. All right, the other reason I use a high speed reel is when casting a jig or a big worm, which I think this has a lot to do with what rod you use as well, as far as getting a good hook set. But when you throw way out there, if you're throwing mono or fluorocarbon or something like that, you have to deal with stretch. So you want to be able to reel down as fast as you can after you get that bite, reel down, get that slack out of that line, and you want to be able to hit that fish hard and be able to eliminate you know, that stretch and that, floor, and that fluorocarbon or monofilament. You want to be able to whip back and you want to be able to get a, get a good hook set in them. Like I said, a lot of that comes back to your, to your rod. Um, you know, if you're doing that technique, obviously you would want a little bit longer rod, so you're moving more line at your hook set, and you would want a heavier rod. So that is the techniques that I use a seven, three to one, or a high speed reel for. You know, a lot of people use eight one to one reels, nine one to one. There's even some 10 one to one reels now, I believe. They bring in almost 40 inches per handle crank. The only, you know, people use them for buzz baits, whopper ploppers, things like that. And probably for casting, you know, long distance um, jigs and stuff like that, to be able to bring in more line, like I was just discussing, um, to be able to get a good, get a good hook set. So it comes down to preference. I tend to keep things simple when it comes to fishing. I use three gear ratio reels, and I just simplify what I do. I think those are the three, the three main, you know, gear ratios that you need in your boat while fishing. You do need a high speed reel and you do need low speed reels. But if you're gonna only have one reel and you can only afford one reel or you only wanna buy one reel or whatever, a six four to one is that mid range, it is the absolute best reel that you can buy to be able to do everything with. So, all right, so I just went over gear ratios for y'all. I hope this helps you out when you're going to go purchase your next reel and maybe I help you understand a little bit more about the importance of what gear ratios make when bass fishing. So I hope you think about this next time you go out to purchase a reel. I appreciate you watching and I'll see y'all next time on Gunfish TV.